let's gather into the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. We'll read from Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. For he's laid the earth's foundations on the sea and built it on the ocean's depth. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those who have whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They'll receive the Lord's blessing and have right relationship with God your Savior. How many of y'all want a right relationship with God your Savior this morning? Yeah. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God, O Jacob. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies, he is the King of glory. And that's, we're going to come into his presence this morning, and we're going to worship the King of glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Can someone say that this morning? Is he?
holy. Amen.
church and those that are watching this morning. It's a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord for corporate worship this morning and to be able to see you beautiful people that are like-minded to help keep me on the straight and narrow during the week, but um, we're going to take up our offering. As I said once before, who can honestly hear say that everything that I have belongs to God? I truly can. And don't take that statement lightly because there is a lot that goes with it. The trust factor, trusting God with every aspect of your everyday lives, just like Lisa talked about the meaning of what a disciple is and what that rabbi is. We're to take on that same personality, you know, of Christ if we have a relationship with him and trust him with everything daily. And that include our finances. We have nice facilities here that we share that we like to come to for corporate worship, but we do have to keep the lights on and that cost. So give back to God what belongs to him. Give back to God what belongs to him, and he's, he, he will honor that. And you can't outgive God. Y you can't. And I'm not, sit I'm not standing here saying that he's going to bless you with a million dollars if you do this. No. No. That's, that's not what I'm saying. We all like these facilities, but we got to keep the lights on and the water running. You could also give if you text 251-302-6777. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and worship you, Lord. And I pray that you change us from within, Lord. Convict our hearts. Send your spirit to convict us, Lord, so we can change and conform to who you are. We do understand this is a lifelong process called sanctification, Lord. And me, for me personally, Lord, I ask that you just strip away my pride, Lord, and give me eyes to see and to be able to love people as you love them and to be patient, Lord. And I ask that you take what is given to you, Lord, and to further your kingdom with it. 
These things I ask in your holy name, I pray. Amen. of Miss Catherine this morning. We're praying for the nations. Sir Eric, I like that. <laughs> Thank you. You're so sweet. All right, the country we're going to be uh, praying for is uh, Colombia this week. And uh, we're going to have a short video. So just uh, stand by and watch. Dear Lord God Almighty, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, I come to you today for the nation of Colombia. It's 46 million people. And Jesus, I just pray that in a very special way, you would hear the heart cry of your people in this war-torn country. Only you know the decades of war that have ravaged the country, leaving four million displaced people who have no shelter. And Jesus, I pray for the armed conflict that continues in the country. Jesus, I just pray you would deal with the FARC and the revolutionary groups that have risen up in Colombia. You're the only one that can bring true peace. I also pray for the criminal bands, gangs that run the drugs, 
wrecked havoc in the country. It's nationwide, Lord. I just pray, Father, that these people might come to know you. Thank you for the ministry in the prisons. We just pray, Jesus, that your church in Columbia would be pure and holy, through which the Holy Spirit can flow unhindered, bringing the whole nation first to a revival of your people and then an awakening of the entire nation. I pray for the president and ministers of the cabinet that these men might know you, that they might be led by you. Only your Holy Spirit can eradicate throughout the entire country, Father, the corruption that's so rampant. Jesus, we thank you for the Word of God, and we pray that the Word of God might be placed in the hands of every believer, every person in Colombia, that they might know what your Word says and understand and come to true repentance in you. Jesus, I pray for godly leadership. I just thank you, Jesus, because you hear the cry of your people. I pray, Jesus, that you will work in the areas where Columbia so needs a voice, a voice of hope. And Jesus, we thank you because you do listen and hear our prayer. In Jesus' name. talked about not having Bibles and having the Holy Spirit and they're persecuted. There's a day coming in the United States of America to where this stuff is going to start happening to us physically. If you haven't been paying attention, it's already happening through the media and things that we want to do when we speak out for Christ and speak up for what's good and what's right according to him. We're called names and all kinds of stuff, but when this actually starts to take place, just know that the uh, war has already been won. Just take courage, stand steadfast in your faith. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to bring up Terry, my beloved brother in Christ. Twin. Hey. I got the memo this morning. Yeah. <laughs> if we could have got uh, Christian to where he is, we could have made our reverse Oreo cookie thing again. <laughs> and the good chocolate's in the middle. They got it. <laughs> oh, man, you get in trouble for that kind of stuff today, but okay. <laughs> um, I probably don't need to preach today. I probably just need to let Lisa come up and repeat what she said this morning in Sunday school because... I don't know if it, uh, what I'm going to say is any better than that. Might take us down a little bit different path, but um, I want to make sure that some prayer needs are prayed for this morning. And uh, before I take those prayer requests, Tuesday night here, a study, an uh, introduction of the study that was presented. Tuesday by Jeff to a study called The Search for Significance. I don't know a single person in the world that would not benefit from that study and that teaching. So I encourage you by all means to come on Tuesday night. Uh, several of us have been through that study three or four times through our lifetime, and uh, I'm still hoping Tammy can get some good out of it when she comes. 
I don't personally need it, but I thought it would be good for her to go through it. Uh, there is a search for significance today. And uh, I, I was thinking that uh, people are afraid of the justice of God. Uh, the fact that we will have to stand before God. I'm going to read some scripture in a few moments. And every one of us, I hope, are going to realize that every single one of us will stand before Almighty God and give a personal account for our life. And we don't like to think about that, but everybody wants justice. When somebody's done wrong, they want justice done. Uh, so that's not something new for us. That's something actually God built into us. Humans want to see justice done. Uh, now, a lot of the things they're screaming about today that they think needs justice don't need justice. Uh, because they're built on um, wart philosophies. What's that phrase, Chris? Not the scripture, I can't remember it. High sounding nonsense. High sounding nonsense. Did any of y'all ever hear any high sounding nonsense out there in the world? Yeah, here in the church sometime. Uh, and it may be, it may be more in more. Uh, Churches than we realized. Uh, I'm not naming names today, but I uh, was brought to my attention by my sweet wife this week that a lot of your contemporary Christian artists are very supportive in the LGBT movement, and the church can't not be supportive of that. Now, that's not the message today, but that's one thing. We cannot support that. Okay, it's built on uh, something that's not true. And God created his design, and it is what it is. Uh, now, let me, let me stop uh, and see if there's some prayer requests in the house today that you might have. Anyone? I'm writing them down this morning. Tammy, what you got? Well, I know Jeremy is fixing to start his new life, and my prayer is that when he does get there and figure all the ins and outs out, that he would find it a good, safe place. Yeah. You know, that the right one that God is going to send. Yeah. Because he's in a great area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jer um, Jeremy, uh, is right here, the short guy in the back. <laughs> Jeremy came to us as a little wayward teenager. Came to us, Tammy's nephew, my nephew. Um, and God's done some miraculous and wonderful things in him and through him and for him. And he worked himself through school. He had a fairly low ACT test score. What was your score? 32? Okay. 33? That's like brilliance. Uh, which actually got him a full scholarship into the University of Alabama where other brilliant things happen. Uh, did did any did anybody see Joey's picture online this week? No, 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 no. Excuse me, brother. There was no Photoshop in that. It was Joey. Joey had on an Alabama jersey. What is the deal? Uh, yeah. Um. See. Now, now I, I do want to ask you something. Look, isn't that face just adorable right there? Such contentment, such joy, such happiness. So there it is. We Christians found that on the internet. So 
There's the proof. You never have to doubt it again. <laughs> he, 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 quote, he, he posted vengeance. His mind says the Lord. And I said, okay, well, leave it in the hands of the Lord then. Don't you take it. Uh, we're going to pray for Jeremy in a minute. I, I saw some other hands up. Linda, what you got, sweetie? For Tammy? I can't hear it. Okay. Procedure. Okay. Okay. Tammy, we love you. Glad to see you today, sweetie. We're going to pray for you. Anyone else? What you got, brother? Yeah, it's tough. What's their names? Callie and Dakota. Cal? Kylie. Kylie. And Dakota? Yeah. That's your, your son? Daughter and son-in-law. Daughter and son-in-law. Okay. Sure will. What you got, Jason? Your two daughters? Yes, sir. And what was the prayer request? Uh, salvation. Amen. Is that a good parental prayer? Amen. Yeah. What you got, Lady Ann? Barbara. Barbara. Thank you, Lady Ann. I know that's a dear, dear friend to you. Lisa, what you got? Uh, do do we need that? Yeah. Ooh, son. Uh, what you got? You do? <laughs> oh, comes. Okay. Parenting's, uh, it's hard, isn't it? And the, the good news is kids, they put us through heartache sometimes. Then they grow up and they have kids and they have to go through it themselves. And then they remember, now I know why mom and daddy was the way they were. Uh, some of us have lived a long time. What you got, Larry? What's your dad's name again? Richard. Richard. Anyone else? BB's going to have a baby in the next... Uh, Ten minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes? <laughs> Chris, are you ready? <laughs> uh, we're not. <laughs> Don't you drop that baby today. In another week or two. Uh, she's doing good. Um, but she does have a little bit of a heart issue that we've got to work together with her having a baby. So they're trying to find out right now in Birmingham what, what to do and how to do that and when to do that. So we especially need to keep them in prayer. I've never, never heard her cry. It's the first time. Has she ever cried before? <laughs> Anybody else? Kayla, what you got, honey? Huh? 
You want to pray for your parents? A what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God wants to be right in the middle of our situations for sure. Is that it right there for today? What? We gotta make sure we keep our prayers for the men and women that are on service. Who? Okay, see, so we can do that. Thank you, Cecil. Chris, what you got, man? Yeah. We know Sam. Like South Alabama. Huh? Yeah. Never know. Okay. A lot of needs for your people, Lord. Does God care about all these things? Absolutely does. Lord, right now we want to extend our hands toward Jeremy. He's moving to California. Help him, Lord. <laughs> uh, as he goes there to find what he needs to nourish himself spiritually. And you have a lot of good people in California, Lord. You have a large church presence there. As Jeremy's looking for housing and all those things, let him also look for a house of worship that he can go to and provide him that need, but also provide his need for travel and transportation and housing and all those things that he's in need of today. Bring that to him today in Jesus' name. We pray for our sister Tammy and Thurman uh, today. Mama's always concerned about her daughter. And so we, we bring her to you. Tammy is your daughter. Lay your hand on her. Touch her. Give her what she needs today. You created her body. You know exactly what she needs. Send it to her. Send it to Thurman. Send your touch there. We pray for Kylie and Dakota, uh, Brandon's and, and Amy's uh, daughter and son, that you would provide for them what is in their hearts to have a child, that you would, number one, be with them in their hearts and their minds so that they're looking to you and trusting in you in this time, Lord. So that need is brought before us and we lay it at your feet and we ask you to touch them and the, the turmoil that is in their church right now, that you would settle it in Jesus' name, that people in that fellowship would walk in wisdom, the wisdom of God to get them through this difficult place. For Jason's daughters, for salvation to come to them, Lord, visit them with your mighty presence, your mighty word. If Jason can't do it, lead them to someone who will expose them to the light of the gospel so that they can turn to you. 
Lady Anne's sweet, precious friend, Barbara, who has this mass uh, behind her gallbladder, Lord, again, we look unto heaven and you, and we trust you with Barbara's life. You've, you've kept her, you've ministered to her, you've been good to her. Continue to do that, Lord, by letting the doctors discover and do whatever they need to do. Give those doctors wisdom and knowledge to deal with them. For our sweet, precious couple, Eric and Lisa, godly wisdom in dealing uh, with their, their grown children and, and in a godly way, in godly manner, and with godly wisdom. Uh, you said that you would fill us with the knowledge of your will by giving us spiritual wisdom and understanding. And you do that so we can walk in a manner worthy of God. And that's what they want to do. So we pray for the Holcombs uh, family that uh, we're all adjusting as our kids get older to what has to happen there and what needs to take place to give them guidance as a godly couple to lead and direct their children, little Cameron, whatever she's going through. Uh, you're the God of children too and young people. You're not, you're not just the God of adult people. Uh, so you touch Cameron and help her in what she is needing today. We pray for Kelly, uh, Kaylee for direction and the softening of hearts and family and, and all members so that we can all walk in the unity of the faith together through life and just speak to her your direction. You are tying, I believe, Kaylee's hearts and affections to, you, to the person of Christ. And I thank you for conversations I've had with that, that sweet daughter of yours. Uh, so keep doing that. We pray for uh, Corey and Leslie and Larry's dad, Richard. Richard, Father, just do a miracle in his life as far as the revelation of Christ coming to him in these latter years and helping him to see what he needs to see concerning Jesus. And for the other family members too, you know their need. Whatever it is, Lord, uh, it's something that's on the heart of Larry, for sure. For Brittany and her delivery that is coming up soon, Lord. We'll, we'll be holding another little baby in our arms in the house here. We thank you for them. Uh, I think we look forward to seeing the little one and two-year-olds run around the house. Uh, we shall see. Uh, I'm sure we will. We'll love every minute of it. Uh, we pray for the men and women in the armed services. Uh, they stand guard tonight for us, for our freedom, for our goodness. They're standing guard. And because they are positioned where they are, the, the world uh, leaves us alone. And we thank you for that. We pray in particular for Sam. We know Sam. Uh, Keep him safe. Watch over him while he's there. And let him draw near and close to you. We pray for Carol, who's not doing well today. In Jesus' name, you touch and minister your goodness to her. Amen. Amen. That was worth it to me. Um... um a few weeks ago, just kind of a quick review here, uh, so I can re remind you where we were. We looked at a, da a downward spiral in Romans 1, and the reason I want to mention that again today, because Romans 2 is going to mention the people of Romans 1, and we have to discover in light of the gospel that we're not, we're not any different from them. And everyone needs the gospel. Amen? And it's not the gospel just for salvation. The, the gospel is there for transformation, folks. 
transformation of us. So we saw the downward spiral, the suppression of truth. We see it a lot in the world today. Uh, we, see, we saw the word that said they knew God, but they refused to worship him as God. And can that happen in the church today? Yeah. Happens every day. People come to church and they're, they're not worshiping him as God. Uh, as the worship team went over their songs this morning, at the end of every song, we, we ask ourselves, why should we sing this song? And we discover because it exalts who Christ is, who God is, and it praises him and his mighty attributes. So that downward spiral uh, especially continued when they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. Does that happen in the world today? A whole lot. And guess what? Where it ends up, uh, God abandons them to their foolish thinking. God gives them over to it. That's if you're going to keep walking away from me, I'll give you over to that mindset. And uh, so we're not to, the little sign used to be up here, we're not to believe everything we think. Right? We're not to believe everything we think. Um, one statement that needs to be repeatedly said among ourselves when we're together is this. What does the scripture say? Not my preference. The world's living on its preferences right now. But what do the scriptures say? Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about the greatest peril facing human beings is what? The wrath of God. I don't want to talk about the wrath of God. Wrath is God's holy revulsion of, of God against anything that's con, con, uh, contradictory to his holiness and who he is. It's a, any corruption, listen to this, any corruption of his divine nature and his original creation and design is repulsive to him. Amen? I need an amen corner here. Uh, so any of that. Uh, so what today? What I want to do today is um, read a few scriptures, and hopefully, I'll set Jeff up in a lot of ways uh, into his message for next week, because eventually, where I want to get to today, if I, I'm gonna quit at eleven thirty. Uh, Say, you sure? That's the goal. Huh? That's the goal. Uh, I want to set us up because I, I want us as, as a church to start thinking about one word that I think is distorted and causes, in many ways, I call it the American disconnect. Because I think it almost originated here. And um, it's the great American disconnect from the true gospel of Christ. Uh, especially in the church, it centers around one word. The word believe. Believe. Those who believe in Jesus and belong to him and follow him. Oh, there's a corresponding life that goes along with believe, right? Believe is not mental ascension to something. It's just saying, well, Jesus died on the cross for me. Is that it? Is that the extent of belief? No way in God's green earth. Let's look at some personal accountability scriptures here. Romans 14. Uh, each of us, now stop and think about that first statement. Each of us will give a personal account to God. Each of us. Well, 
Miss, Miss Ann's holy like God is. She's not going to give a personal account to God. Yeah, Lady Ann has to give a personal account to God. Eric has to give one. Haley's got to give one. Tammy's got to give one. Buddy's got to give one. BB's got to give one. Jason's got to give one. Rusty's got to give one. Personal count to God. So, in the context of this, stop condemning each other. And look what it says when it's, when it's tied into the personal account of God. Des decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. The reason for that, there's serious problems for those who cause others to stumble. Who says? Jesus says. Okay, go back, uh, go back, brother, sister. Uh, decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall down. Do we consciously need to remember that as we walk through our life? Because I would hate to do anything that would make you stumble. Uh, one of my greatest fears standing up here each week is that I might tell you something that's wrong. And I know standing in this spot right here that I'm accountable to God for what I say to you. I know that. Next scripture. We must all stand before Christ to be judged. Who? All of us. And we're going, we're going to have to figure out what are we standing before him to do, okay? We, we are each, we will each receive whatever we deserve for the good and evil we've done in this earthly body. That's hard to swallow, isn't it? We're, we're going to each receive whatever we deserve for the good and the evil we've done in this earthly body. It's a tough, tough statement there. And I'm not, I know I'm not reading all the context of these, but I, I'm, I'm wanting to all see we will stand and to give an account to God. Go ahead. Now, the reason I put this one in here, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. You ever thought about that? It's sin to know what you ought to do. I ought to have an intake of God's word regularly. Who agrees? Who does it? Okay. You got to make sure you do because it's sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Now, the context of that, obviously, is something a little different. The context of that is trying to steer your own life when it says, hey, don't be saying, hey, we're going to this city and that city, and we're going to work there a year or two, we're going to do that, and we're going to do this. That gets you in trouble. Gets me in trouble. I don't, maybe it don't get you in trouble. It's always gotten me in trouble. And what does it say? What you ought to say is what? If God wills, I'll do this. How about throwing that in front of your life? If God's will, if God wills, I'll do this. Well, what does that do? It obviously keeps you before him. And it's sin to know what you ought to do. Tammy, someone once told Tammy that she did not want to learn a lot about what was truth from the scripture because if she did, she says, then I'm accountable to it. Well, the problem is you're already accountable to it. Whether you learn it or not because you're ignoring a lot of his, his word. 
And so that logic doesn't work. It won't work before God one day. Well, I, I didn't know this. How about these other 500 things? Did you know those? Well, yeah. Uh, go ahead. This is one we're going to get to today, hopefully. But because you're stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, and we're going to read through about 15 verses of this Romans 2 in just a few moments. You're storing up terrible punishment for yourself. This don't apply to me, Terry. I'm a child of God. Okay, let's just all make sure today that we are. Let's make sure that what we believe or say we believe, I think Jeff has told us enough, maybe not, maybe he's going to keep saying it, that you are living what you believe. If you're neglecting this or neglecting that, you are living what you believe. Right now. You say, well, I don't have any intake of God's word. You're living what you believe. Then God has to look at that and say, you're not interested in being my disciple. You were interested in coming in, praying a prayer, doing this, doing that, going to church regularly. We're going to see something in a minute. Because you're stubborn, you're storing up a terrible day for yourself. Well, what's going to happen? A day of anger is coming. We do not like to attach that to God, do we? Do we? A day of anger is coming. Probably not if this new created Jesus is really Jesus. Because evidently he, he winks at anything that we do. Nope, wrong Jesus. Jesus is not winking. And Jesus is not laughing when we joke about Immorality. He's not laughing when we joke and make fun of people who were in homosexuality. No, my prayer is that God let them see the truth of the gospel here and come to you. Not mad at them. Open your eyes. What's God against? God's against all immorality. Heterosexual, homosexual. He's look at look at there. He couldn't find a bone. There it comes. He, he's against it. All right. A day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. His righteous judgment. Is God going to righteously judge us? You, you know, uh, when someone passes away and we don't know their condition. We automatically think, well, he went to, straight to hell. Well, none of us know that. Or he went straight to heaven. Evidently, everyone who dies in Hollywood goes straight to heaven. All the singers, you know, they, they, they drugged themselves to death, drank themselves to death, but they all went to heaven. Okay. And maybe... This new Jesus is taken over, you know. Not the one of the scriptures, but okay. He, and what's he going to do on that day uh, when his anger is coming? God's righteous judgment will, will be revealed. He's going to judge everyone according to what they've done. Oh boy. Now believe must mean something else than just mental ascension here. I believe Jesus died for mankind on the cross. Yeah, and the devil believes that too. Yeah, he believes it. And they've witnessed it. All, of, all the demonic forces of hell knows it. That doesn't save you. I go to McDonald's. I'm not a hamburger. I look like one. Um, 
How many hamburgers did Wimpy want from Popeye on Tuesday? Um, he's going to judge everyone according to what they've done. Go ahead. Romans 2.16. This is, will be the last scripture we read today when we read Romans 2. This is the message I proclaim. Now, if you are going to read the book of Romans, realize the, the gospel doesn't show up to Romans 3, 21, is it Chris? 20 or 21, the gospel shows up right there. Up, up until that point, he's telling, what, he's telling you what the world looks like without God. Say again, brother. Yeah, yeah, you're kind of getting hung over hell here. And so th this last verse in this portion of this, this scripture, this is a message I proclaim. That the day is coming when God through Christ Jesus, oh boy, will judge everyone's secret life. Do you, do I have a secret life? Go ahead. That's serious business. Now, probably one of the most frightening scriptures in the Bible. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this is dividing the ones that truly believed and the ones who acted like they believed. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Does that shake us up this morning? Not everyone who calls to me, Lord, Lord. Now, that's not the world he's talking to. That's people that have been inside some capacity, the church, and had some belief about God. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. And what is the will of the Father? This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. He, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when he first glorified his Son, listen to him. Don't listen to the pundits of the world. Don't listen to the cultural gurus of the day. Okay? Don't listen to that. Don't listen to the, the warped philosophies that's thrown out there to get us in a good, soft place with God. Don't listen to that. Only those who actually do the will of the Father, which is uh, very basic, very simple here. And it's... it's told in a scripture that I think we're going to get to. Let's see if I had it in my notes. Yep, Luke 6. Um, it's going to be there. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, we've, we've prophesied in your name. We've done this in your name. We've done that in your name. We perform miracles in your name. But I will reply, Jesus talking here. Well, at one time, you were in a very good place with me. Is that what he replies? Can you hear that this morning? I never knew you. I never knew you. What happened? And could you imagine, I don't want to imagine it, for myself or Tammy or anyone else, get away from me. Man, that song, that's piercing. I don't know if you put the statement up, uh, Christian, uh, Caitlin. Did you? The, there is no doubt. Do you have that or not really? You do? I, I wrote this yesterday, and I just wanted to present it to you. 
There's no doubt that the great disconnect centers around the single word believe. What does believe really mean? Can we truly believe and not follow? Can you? Can you believe and not follow? It's not belief. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Jesus asked this question one day when comparing two types of people. So why do you keep calling me Lord when you don't do what I say? Now, I just want to pause on that a, a moment. And since that was a, Jesus, a question that Jesus asked, in his very next words, he, he gives this comparison with two people. And guess what? They both heard the good news. They both heard it. It's a big difference, huh? And we'll see what that difference is. Uh, so Jesus asked this question, why do you call me Lord? When you don't do what I say, go ahead. By asking this question, two strong statements are being declared. If he is indeed our Lord, then the real connection is made in my human responsibility to decide to come to him, listen to him, and follow him and his teaching. Is there human responsibility in the scriptures? <laughs> totally there. So the real connection is in the human beings being responsible enough to decide and that I'm going to come to him, I'm going to listen to him, and I'm going to follow him and what he says. That means what Jesus says and by the way, Jesus says more than what the red letters say. I hear people say, well, Jesus didn't even mention this. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is all Jesus' word here. Okay. Red letter, no red letter. It's, it's what he's declared. And it, he has said. So by asking this question, two strong statements. If he is indeed Lord, then the real connection is made of my human responsibility to decide to come and listen to him and follow him in his teaching. And not just verbally call him Lord. I go to church. I was raised in church. That doesn't make you a follower of Jesus. I go to church every week. That doesn't make you a follower of Jesus. I give. I support. I teach. That doesn't make you a follower of Jesus. Go ahead. I don't know if, if indeed Christ is building his church according to his pattern, is he? Does he want to do that? Has God got a pattern? We went over some pattern last week. This is an important statement here. If indeed Christ is building his church according to his pattern, then our wills, our opinions, our preferences, our desires must be laid aside for the sake of the king and his kingdom. Well, I heard the Bible say something about that, but that don't really bother me that it's that way. In the world. If it bothers Jesus, it should bother you. If it don't, there's a disconnect in the belief system here. Uh, if this is not done, if this is not done, if we don't lay aside our preferences, because I'm pretty sure people are living on preferences now, and a lot of that preferences is, is connected to the work philosophies that we hear out there. You know what's really frustrating for a pastor living in this age right here with these things? 
is that there's 168 hours in a week and we have one of them to try hold us together in Christ. One out of 168. What percentage of that? It's not good, is it? I know it's less than 1%. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, if this is not done, lay inside of this, then surely we're following a man-made imposter Jesus that is not the Jesus of the Holy Scriptures. Got more? Jesus said, I'm going to show you what it looks like when someone comes to me. Aren't you glad Jesus put something in there? Jesus said, I'm going to show you what it looks like when someone comes to me, listens to me and my teaching, and then follows it. We're going to read that scripture in a moment. Our entire destiny rests on our response to the words spoken by the God-man Jesus. I think I got a little more. And I'll say this on behalf of the eldership of this house today. We beg you. We beg you not to follow this, the newly formed, popular American golden cab made up Jesus who allows people to throw in their preferences, their opinions, their rights, their wills, and then build their lives around modern culture beliefs and themselves. Let's not copy the behavior of the customs of this world, but let God transform us into a new person by changing the way we think. The customs of this world cannot be added on to our Jesus life. That would not end up well for us. Okay? Luke 6. Let's read that scripture together. 43 through 49. You read this a few weeks ago. I know it. Reading it again. Uh, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. Okay, there's a distinction here, isn't there? A bad tree can't produce good fruit. We say, well, I'm not following Jesus, but my life's producing good fruit. No, it's not. So well, I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm this, I'm that. A tree is identified by its fruit. You ever walked up to an apple tree and pulled a peach off of it? Never been done. Figs are not gathered from thorn bushes. Grapes aren't picked from bramble bushes. A good person, you're only a good person in Christ, by the way. Let's clarify that. Produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasure of an evil heart. Terry, you trying to tell me some of us in here have an evil heart. I'm not saying no such a thing. I'm just reading the Bible. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Oh, my goodness. And that's when he said this right here. So why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I say? You're doing what you say. You're doing what you prefer. Then he says this statement. I'm going to show you what it looks like when someone comes to me and listens to my teaching and then follows it. Simple, simple, simple. Go ahead. It's like a person building a house who digs deep. I heard uh, Lisa tell the class this morning about Larry and Irene studying the scriptures. And she said they dig deep. Well, I know that is true. Because of what he says and what I hear come out of the man's mouth. 
Matter of fact, he says, I'm studying this and this, and then all of a sudden I want to go study that. You know. Uh, so a, a person building a house, and we are building a house on Christ, who digs deep, lays the foundation on solid rock. Let's sing a line or two of it. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. What the rest of it? All other ground, all other ground is sinking sand or shifting sand. Uh, one of them, sinking sand, all other is sinking sand. Now that's a old hymn. Is it true? Absolutely the truth. Everything is built on him. Uh, one reason I love the, the Bible project, because they realize that every bit of this points to Jesus Christ. All of it. Christ is the ultimate display to the earth of what God is like. And his short life, Kaylee, 33 years on the earth, is God just giving us a little snapshot of what God is like. When you study what he's like. So it's like a person building his house and laying the foundation on a solid rock. Well, I'm my own solid rock. You're your own shifting sand, sinking sand. When the floodwaters rise and break, when, when the floodwaters, when, not if, when, floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. And why is it well built? Because it's built by God. Yeah. And on the foundation of who Christ is. Next verse. Now, this is trouble for some in the, in the church today. And I'm not talking about this church. There could be some here. But it's in church, churches. Anyone who hears and doesn't obey. And what, what does obey there mean? Obey by following, doing, living by his words. Amen? That's what it is. That's not... Taking some little thing, oh, well, I was disobedient there. It's not that. Anyone who hears it and he doesn't obey, he's not building on me. He's not building the foundation on me. He's like a person who builds a house without a foundation. That's your, shift, that's your sinking sand right here. When the flood sweep down against that house, it will collapse in a heap of ruins. As promised. As promised. I won't get to Romans 2. 1 through 15. But I will get to it. In a few weeks. Because I, I'm going to at least take us up through the third chapter of Romans. And then later this year. Uh, we're... In, in my eyes, take on something pretty bold and teach you the book of Ephesians so you can see that in the glorification of Christ is also, it includes his true church and the oneness of that church in being connected to him. Amen. So, You didn't really get too deep into the belief and not belief. I'm sure Brother Jeff's going to take some of that on. And you'll get it. And Yeah, maybe next week you'll get it. Uh, man, I'm telling you, the life following Jesus is serious business. It's not to be played with, toyed with. You don't toy with your eternal destiny. And bow your heads with me just for a moment. And I'm not going to call you up here. 
I, I just want you to, I want to see if you're getting any of it. I just want to ask you today. I got some things in my belief system about who Christ is that I think I need some help with and I need more instructions with. I, I'm not quite sure of some things and I want to keep pressing on to know Christ more. If that's you this morning, raise your hand up. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Every hand should ultimately go up because the, the call is that I may know him more. Father, this little group of people has decided that we will follow Jesus. We get really excited when we get the opportunity to go and saturate our community with the good news of the gospel of Christ. We look forward to that in a few weeks, being able to do that in the city of Pascagoula again. And somehow go out there and be effective for the kingdom of God. So here we sit this morning as a family of God. We need you. I need to make sure that my belief in my life is tied to what I say I believe. We can't just say it. It doesn't work. We actually have to decide to follow, to lead, to move forward in our knowledge of who you are. I pray you help us do that this week. And we thank you for the opportunity to come together today to worship and sing and rejoice around the person of Christ. And I pray that our song and our words have tied our affections more and more to Jesus. Help us to do that. Lord, help us lean on somebody if we need help. You didn't create us to walk by ourselves through this life. So be with us this week. Let this group of people know we're standing right here in the front. They need us. They need prayer afterwards. We're going to be right here listening to their heart. Thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. See a bunch of you on Tuesday.